Hey now, and welcome to the City Off Campus podcast with your two favorite hosts, Sammy Sommerfeld and Jack McFarland. Before we get started today with our guest, I want to just announce that we are doing a gift card giveaway with Estella's in Iowa City. Guys, I've talked about on other pods. I love Estella's. It's my one place where I go to for burritos here. Like literally the one place I don't get Chipotle when I'm in Iowa City. I don't go anywhere else. I only go to Estella's. Um, our first giveaway, we're going to be doing two $25 gift card giveaways. Um, so be on the lookout. We're going to give out more information later this week. Remember, remember check, our, check us out on Good Pods and also um, – Follow our podcast, Instagram and Twitter for more updates on these upcoming giveaways. So now to introduce our guest, we've got Patrick, Mc, uh, Patrick McCaffrey um, on the podcast, Iowa basketball, um, good friend of the show this season. So Pat's back in IC. So how's everything going? Uh, uh, great. Really awesome. I've really enjoyed my time since I've been, <laughs> no, it's, it's been fine. You know, uh, definitely wish that we were still in Indy, uh, just watching the games and everything like that's been really hard, but you know, just kind of take it on the chin, move forward, try to get ready for next year. So let's, you know, before we jump into other stuff. So for you, what was the highlight of the experience of you obviously got one win, then you lost to Oregon. So like from the win, what was that? Cause like, even in the Oregon game, you made some plays in that game. Like you got mm-hmm. some, you know, plays there in grand Canyon, you know, there was some fun stuff. So like, what was the thing for you that like made it the most memorable? Like what was the most memorable positive thing from the experience? Um, I mean, obviously the grand Canyon games first thing that comes to mind, like it was crazy. They had like so many fans. Really? Oh yeah, those, those fans they like were they were ridiculous. There. They were doing like Zumba dance class well, yeah, like, that. in the stands. It yeah. was ridiculous. Oh, they were all like, I guess the way they do it is like they like put like a, one person like a real dancer or whatever like in every section, and so they all like coordinate, and then like everybody else just kind of does like the moves that they do or something like that. I was what I was told, and I was like, that's hella tough. Like that's tough, but like. Yeah, so their fans were crazy. It felt like a road game, really, is what it felt like. But, like, that game was fun. Like, I felt like we played well. I felt like I had a pretty good game. Uh, and then the Oregon game was pretty – was was it was okay for a little bit. It, was, it hurt. But I would say that was probably one of my better games of the season, like, just as a whole. But, yeah, I would say, like, the, the Grand Canyon game was really fun, like, playing in front of all those people. Because, like, we hadn't really done much of that this year. Like, this is kind of, like, at the beginning of the bubble, but but uh, the Big Ten tournament in Indy, like, that was really fun because, like, there was fans and, like, it was – it was I enjoyed that. And then, like, what else was that? The wiffle ball game we played was really fun. Like, and just like, kind of being around the guys and everything, man. Like, the selection show was fun, but it's, like, everybody on our team was really cool with each other. So, it's just, like, really easy for all of us to kick in and everything like that. So, I had a, I, I had a good time. Yeah, for sure. Um, what was the play you made that you were like, this was cool? Like, you know, dreaming about playing in the tournament, like the dunks, was it, you know, a stop? Like, what was like a play where you were like, that was fun? To be honest, bro, like maybe after the game, like I think about stuff like that, but like while I'm playing, like I'm just so like. No, rocking. I mean like in reflection, yeah. like afterwards, like what yeah. was something? I mean, like, like after – I mean, like, the Grand Canyon game, like, I had, like, a couple buckets in the half court. So, I was like, damn, like, I just I just scored. Like, in t- like, that's tough. And then, like, I thought I played pretty well in that game. And then the Oregon game, like, I had that little stretch in the first half where I played well. But I didn't really reflect on it until, like, days later because, like, we, like, we lost. So, it's like I wasn't going to, like, be, be out here feeling myself. Like, because <laughs> it's like we lost. So, it's like I was just kind of reflecting on that and just talking to all the guys and everything like that and just – so it's like I would say like yeah like I would say the Oregon like little stretch where I had like a couple buckets and then I had like the big block and everything like that like I'd say that was a pretty good stretch but uh, yeah for the most part like like it's just like you're just so locked in like when the game's going on like like I didn't even notice like anything going on around me it's like you just like play hard and like you just you just zero in on what's in front of you it's just and that's just kind of how I approach it. 
So like when you're locked in like that, because you talk about how you notice the fans and the noise a little bit and stuff like, you know, when you're in the arena, is it more like when, you know, the clock starts again, you know, after timeout, whatever, you're just kind of locked in. But in between yeah. that, you can kind of notice what's going around and that type yeah, of stuff. Yeah, like on the bench, you can see like all the dancing and everything like that. But like when I'm in the game, bro, like I didn't really notice like anything. You hear noise. But, like, and I can hear my coaches and everything, but, like, for the most part, like, like it's not, like, somebody's yelling at me. I'm probably not listening unless there's, like, a stoppage of play. The Oregon strength coach kept yelling at me. <laughs> what was he saying? <laughs> well, so he said something that I thought was, like, kind of – I can't, can't say it on this, but, like, he said something I thought was a little weird, so I made a comment. <laughs> and, then, and, and he got mad at me and started screaming at me for, like, five possessions. Was he and wearing I, a was he wearing a polo that was like a medium and he was definitely a, a large and you can yeah, tell it was just a little too small. Tell, like, <laughs> the coach is, like you can just tell like who the strength coach is. Yeah, because like, it's like he's strong, like really like crazy energy, but like not saying anything like of substance. Because it's like because like, it's like he's not like he's not a basketball guy. He doesn't know what he's talking right. about. So like, like he's just screaming like come on, ah! like just bringing energy, bro. So it's just like. So I could tell that it was the strength coach. And so then, like, he keeps yelling at me, and then I, I gave him some stuff back. We can't we can't get into specifics of what I was saying on, on here, but, like, or what he was saying. But then I went up and told the ref. <laughs> <laughs> what does the ref say in that scenario? When you come up oh, to him and you're like, dude, this guy's, like, on my case for whatever well, reason. Yeah, like, I went up to him and I was like, yo, can you get the strength coach off my ass? He keeps screaming at me. He's like, which one is it? I was like. First you know I which said, one it is. It's the fucking guy wearing the too small polo. Yeah, no. So then I had to like break it down for him and tell him which one it was. I was like, he just gave himself screaming. He's been screaming at me like for like five possessions. I was like, it's good. Like I'm gonna keep yelling back. And so it's like, can we just like, can you get him to stop yelling at me? And he's like, yeah, yeah. And then the guy never said another word to me. But like, yeah, bro, that sh- that was funny. Has that ever happened to you before? Where just someone I like did. not even not even not even like a but like not a coach like someone just not like as connected to the team like you said like yeah he's a strength coach it's not a basketball manager. guy yeah manager. like a manager or yeah just have you ever been college, happy? like I that was to, yeah. not college. in high school i used to jaw with everybody <laughs> everybody who would say like i would start jawing in college not necessarily as much like if they say something and you make a shot right in front of their bench you all say something but it's not like like those people aren't really as like disrespectful really as like the Oregon guy was especially because like most of the people's in our league so it's like like I didn't even really get in that many like trash talking like instances like during the season like right a lot of them in the non-conference to be honest like not like the smaller schools like <laughs> just come in and start like wilding so it's like so it's like I'll talk some shit in those games but like as far as like the Big Ten games go like I can't really remember like any specific instances that me or any of my teammates got in fights with so it's like, yeah, but then like the Oregon game, and it wasn't even like the the players; it was those the coaches. So it's just, or not the coaches, the, this one guy. So it was like, it wasn't even anything crazy. But like in high school, I used to draw with everybody, players, coaches, whoever would listen to me. But like in college, not necessarily as much. Would your coach let that fly in high school? He's like, oh, that's Pappy and Pat. Like he's gonna. He do would. That. I mean, he wouldn't know really until yeah. like like he would probably sometimes just be like, hey, come on, man, stop. Like, but it's like. But, like, and, and the thing is, I would just, like, I would never, like, it's not like I'd go out of my way to, like, jaw at a certain coach. Like, yeah. it's not like that. It's, like, if they say something or, like, somebody says something to me, then it's, like, then I really go. But like, it's not like I'm going out of my way to, like, tell people whatever. Like, it's not like, it's not like I just make a shot and I'm all of a sudden cussing out their whole bench. Like, it's not like that. It's, like, if, if you are disrespectful to me first, then I'm just going to be, like, a thousand times more disrespectful back to you. And, like, I'm not going to stop. And so that's kind of more so what it was. I feel like the games where it's like, like maybe like you just said, you couldn't think of a specific example in like a conference game, but I think those conference games just kind of have like that unsaid respect and just there's an intensity to them where you don't need to say anything because it's already all on the line. Like, Like you don't see like ever since that, that first game with Connor and DeMonte where they were head to head, like you really don't see that much on the court now between the teams because it's, we just need to like get results and that's all it is. Yeah, no. And we've played what, since the Connor and DeMonte incident, we've played what, like two and a half games with Illinois. And like, at least when I was on the court, like there was not really any jawing or anything like that. Like everybody was on pretty good behavior. So it was just kind of like, 
the girls like it wasn't not at least no join that i saw so it's like mm. it's not even really like it's just kind of like i don't know what it is with them but like all the other schools it's like just kind of a different level of respect and everything, everything so did, like you, that. did you end up making a bracket for this tournament yeah it was horrible oh okay so my final four was uh us illinois uh, Ohio State. State. Oh, that's really good, bad. And Michigan, I think. <laughs> and the thing is, bro, it's not even like I was like super locked in on having like a all Big Ten like final yeah. four. Yeah. I just, just picked the Big Ten teams like subconsciously. Like it's like, well, I think they can beat them. Like I think they can beat them. So it's like it just ended up that I had an all Big Ten final four. So like I was like, damn. <laughs> but- <laughs> Oh, I was ahead. just going to say, is there reason to believe that some people, and not some people, a lot of people have been bagging on the Big Ten as a whole for just mm-hmm. maybe not getting results in this tournament. And do you think that there is part of it you could attribute to the fact that it is such a tough conference? It is like some people call it a meat grinder where so many teams are banged up by the end of the season and mm-hmm. conference tournament that you, once you roll into that NCAA tournament, some some conferences and leagues just don't have that same intensity and physicality. Do you think that is a factor for Big Ten teams that go into the tournament? I mean, like, I'm not going to make excuses for no, ourselves right. or anybody else. I don't really – because, like, I guess I can't speak on, like, any other team situation, like, because I don't really know for real. I couldn't speak on ours, and I know we were, like – But would of- you say, like, there's, like, an added physicality or intensity that you could see within – this conference in comparison to maybe I, I don't I don't want to like put like a conference up for comparison's sake but like a, a Pac-12 or or a, a Big East team obviously there's way different styles from left to right but still the Big Ten year in and year out is a very tough conference and we've said on this pod before like you need depth for success and and mm. it's a, a fact because people go down you need people to step up and I feel like it just matter of fact that there is just that added level of intensity that you always got to bring it every night. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, I guess I also like, like I can't speak on like the other conferences either. Cause I'm sure like in the pac 12, like you got to bring it every night. I'm sure mm-hmm. like in the, Big East, you got to bring it every night, like ACC, same thing, whatever, big 12, all the sec, all those schools, all those conferences. So it's like, like I'm not gonna make excuses for our league. Like we didn't, we didn't play well in the tournament. For being like, we just didn't. Like, like other than Michigan, they're still going. But like for the most part, like our our conference just didn't perform to the level of the, whatever we needed to do in the tournament. Like you can blame it on like seating and like matchups and everything. Because like, like it's like if you think of, like the NCAA tournament, really what it comes down to is like matchups. Like. Mm-hmm. Like just favorable, like like styles or whatever. But like like I said, I'm not gonna make excuses for us or nobody in our league because like that, that's not how that's not what I'm about. So it's just like, you know, like we just we just didn't play well. Our league didn't perform well enough, and like you know, I think that's gonna give everybody in our league more motivation moving forward because like now everybody's gonna talk down on it because like oh well the Big Ten blah 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 whatever whatever. So it's just kind of like okay, well you'll see, and just kind of have another shot and try to make more runs at it and kind of prove that we deserve like that respect that we had beforehand. Well, one thing I want to ask you about, you know, from on a positive note is, you know, we, when we first talked to your first interview, you know, you were talking a lot about how, you know, this was your first season of big 10 play and, you know, first full real season where, you know, it was kind of the season where you were setting the tone and kind of building off of this moving forward for, you know, personally, Mm -hmm. So for you, what's been the biggest takeaway for you coming out of this season from, you know, getting to play in the NCAA tournament, having, you know, you know, growth, letting the game slow down a bit? Like, what are you taking away that you're building off of now going into next season? Just kind of like I've been thinking about this a lot over the past week because I've had a lot of time to think. So it's like really I would say like it's so much easier preparing like for a season when like I know what to expect, like like when I'm on the floor, like I know what shots I'm gonna get, I know what looks I'm gonna get, because it's like, like when I'm working out, like like before this season or last summer, like like preseason, all that stuff, it's like okay, like I'm doing all this stuff, but it's like I don't really know like what I'm gonna see like in in the game. I don't know how defense is gonna play me. I don't know all that stuff. So now it's like okay, like I have something to build off. I have a season where I played, like I played. I started playing a lot more towards the end. So it's like, okay, like I've seen different things. I've seen di- like, like all that different stuff. Like I played in the NCAA tournament, playing the Big Ten tournament. Now I know 
kind of what to expect and to build off of like going for next year. So it's just kind of like the experience thing is huge. Like is it, at the end of the day, like compare all you want. There's nothing like just being thrown in the fire, which is kind of like how I'm sure a lot of athletes would describe it. But really, it's like that, that's kind of how it was, especially in a league that was experienced, like as experienced as our league, kind of being like a young player, like in that sense. So it's just kind of like really cool. And now I know like kind of what looks I'm going to see and all that different stuff like moving forward. One thing that I want to ask you about too, with you know, m- you know, moving forward on to next year, is obviously your role is just going to continue to grow on the team, and you're only mm-hmm. just going to be a bigger piece as you know some of the guys leave and things like that. And you know, there's there's already been articles being published talking about you, Keegan, Joe, like all these other people, you know. So for mm-hmm. you, like, what do you see, you know, the team? play looking like next year with you know some of these pieces like Luca and some of these other guys leaving like what are you guys looking forward to coming out of this I would say we're gonna have a really like different team like unique team obviously like like we just have to wait and see like how our roster shakes out like if Weezy comes back like see if anybody goes to the portal I don't think per- like I don't think anybody's gonna go to the portal but like you don't really know at this point it's still too it's still early so it's like I think a lot of that depends on just kind of how our roster shakes out. But I would say like with the guys that we have coming back, like we have a very athletic team. So I think like like we'll have a lot of like we'll we'll push the pace and like I feel like we'll be able to really run and jump and rebound and, and all that sort of stuff. And like I feel like we'll be really athletic and aggressive like on defense and offense and all that different stuff. We we don't well obviously if 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 Weezy ends up leaving that's a lot of threes that we lose with like j and Weezy and Luca. So it's like, you like, so it's like, we're probably not going to make all those up. So we're going to try to have to get those back at buckets in that production, like in other ways with the, whether that's pushing the pace and, and like kind of playing fast and like being really aggressive to the hoop. And it's like, we're probably not going to make up all those threes, but then I also means like guys like, me Keegan guys that really didn't necessarily make a lot of threes like last year are going to have to step it up and and work on our shooting and and you know bring in guys like Chris Murray and like all those different pieces that can help us make some shots and that yeah so like with that like with Chris Murray who didn't get a lot of playing time this year and so, you know Aaron Uless and some of these other guys how do you see them stepping in with them kind of getting to be around you know the leadership of Luca Jabo some of these guys who were around for so long how do you see that helping some of your younger teammates, you know, step into bigger roles next year? Well, like just anytime you're around somebody like Luca, like with the example that he sets, not even necessarily with his words, just kind of like with what he does, like and just like his whole mentality, like we all witnessed that. Like we all saw that, like, like he's relentless. So it's like I would say like that's something that like is really important like for our team and moving forward is just like that we were able to see like how he was every day like and how like the intensity that he brought every day and like that's what you need to succeed like at this level you, you got to come ready to work every single day and come ready to compete and come ready to grind because that's that's how it's got to be like because we got to get better we got to work and so like I feel like they were able to see like his work ethic and like what he was able to do so, like, that's something that they're able to take. And a lot of those guys, like, they didn't play, like, a ton, but, like, they they, they they were able to kind of experience a lot of it still. So, it's, like, they didn't necessarily play, like, all the minutes, but, like, they'll, 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 they were able to get some really important experiences and really important minutes on certain. Like, Aaron played a decent amount in the Oregon game. Like, Tony was an important piece down, down the end of this uh, – towards the end of the season. So, you know, I think like they just are able to pick up on some things that you don't necessarily pick up on when you're watching it on TV in high school. And like just being around guys like Luca, J. Bo, Connor, Weezy, CJ, you just kind of see like what it takes to be good at this level. So now I think with that example that they had set before them, they're able to kind of they'll they'll be able to step into new roles and, and move forward. Are there any matchups remaining in this tournament that you see and you're just like, yeah, it's going to be one that I look forward to watching? Or are you just kind of sitting back and letting it unfold and you're just like, ah, we'll see how it goes? Yeah, to be honest, bro, I don't really care about it mm-hmm. anymore now that we're out. Like, I don't – like, I'll watch just because, like, I'm not doing anything else. But, like, I don't really – it's like, yeah. Like, mm-hmm. it's, it's too upsetting, <laughs> like, when we when I watch. But I, I what I do think is uh, I think the Zags are going to – Gonna take it home. I think. I think those those dudes are whew, Suggs. What? Like he's a problem. So it's like, like I think the Zags are gonna kind of. I think the Zags will win it all. That's my personal opinion. 
But, how do you um, how how do you stop a team like Gonzaga in your opinion? Like there really I mean, there is really no book on how to. There hasn't really been a successful team thus far. But like, what do you see a team needing to do in order to like stop Gonzaga doing what they're good at? You, it really what it comes down to is how you defend ball screen action because like which is I mean which is a lot easier said than done and it's a lot different because it's like okay like Timmy and Suggs is in the pick and roll right that's really hard to guard because those two are elite. And then you, at the same time, you have Kispert on the replace. So it's like, so it's like, you can't, you can't help Timmy too much or help on Timmy too much because then Suggs is just going to throw it behind like back to Kispert and he's going to whack that three. So really what it comes down to is defending ball screen action really because that's their whole offense revolves around ball screen action, side ball screens, high ball screens, all different ball screen action all throughout the floor. So I think really what it comes down to first and foremost is, is how you defend that. And then also, secondly, I think it comes down to a lot of different stuff like in transition because they really push the pace with Suggs, especially And Suggs. Suggs is so unselfish. He gives it up. Timmy runs. Suggs throws it ahead. Wings run. Suggs throws all these different types of passes. You can tell he was a quarterback. He's, he's tremendous. So it's like so and they play like so free flowing and so well together. Like you're not going to you're not going to stop Gonzaga. Like you're you're not you're you're not gonna stop Gonzaga, and I think their defense is something that I think teams are gonna try to exploit. But like at the same time, like you still have to try to slow them down offensively. And like I said, like it really comes down to how to defend their ball screen action. But with their players and their personnel that they have, it's hard to stop. So it's like you gotta tag the roll man. You still gotta get out to Kispert. You gotta like slow Timmy's roll down. So you know I think I think it's gonna be hard to stop them. You gotta keep IIE off the glass. That dude is one of the more underappreciated players in college basketball, I would say just because of how he's able to rebound and what he's able to do for their team. And he can still get you buckets too. Like, it's not like he's just out there for rebounds and all that. Like he's still a very talented scorer, but I think like mainly what it comes down to is how you defend ball screen action. I wanted to pivot a little because um, after the tournament had finished, you, you kind of like went back on Twitter and you tweeted and I, I love this tweet because I, I want to talk about it a little. Watching the last dance for the fourth time, it'll never make sense to me how they dismantled the team that won six of eight titles. It actually makes me bro, mad. It makes me sick. Sick. Like, why would y'all do that, bro? Like, Jerry Krause, your ego is that big. But, like, a, a couple of the replies that I read, like, one guy said, like, that he he knew Reisdorf or something, and he said, like, that Reisdorf said that that wasn't necessarily how it went down. He said, like, they just kind of tried to change the narrative, like, for mm. Michael's sake or whatever. And, like, mm. that may be true. Like, I don't know. But, like, just from, like, what the documentary showed, it's so aggravating. Like, because it's, like, why would you not, like, they've won six of eight titles. One of them was out with the one of the ones that they lost was without Michael. So, it's, like, and the other one, he was just coming back off baseball. So, it's, like, how do you not run it back? Like, how do you not, like, run it back with those guys? That's something that I'll never understand. So being a LeBron fan, and obviously, Sam, you can hop in if you see any point. Is there – because I I like LeBron a lot, and I'm not a huge basketball fan, but I watched The Last Dance during, like, quarantine and all that, and it was just – it, for me, felt like Michael Jordan's peak. Like, f- for his ability to nearly go eight for eight or maybe nine for nine in championships, like, his peak – I don't know if we'll ever see it matched just how great he was like in that peak. But like, would you say LeBron, his, his overall like peak has lasted longer than Jordan's. Is that a fair way of putting it? Because I think when when Michael was on, there was no stopping him. Like it was on all the time, all 82, every postseason game, not to discredit LeBron by any means, but it, it's an obvious thing where LeBron would like load manage and he'd take a night off and he's looking at that to get the best seating and get to the playoffs. And that is his main goal. Jordan, I don't really know like if there was a moment where Jordan took a second off, but did that burn him out quicker? I don't know. Like he, yeah. he had that ability to go nine for nine and he didn't. And part of that is because of Jerry, but there is a feeling when you step back and you're like, man, LeBron, like, he's been in the finals like every other year, it feels like for his entire career. And the guy hasn't really lost a step. If anything, he's just changed his game like Michael did to accustom to his age. So it's interesting to just watch that and then think about how that goat conversation kind of looks now, because I feel like at least I have a perspective of what Michael actually was, 
because yeah. a lot of people in that debate didn't watch Michael. Like I never watched Michael. I think Michael was sick, but I never watched him. I think he's really good. I think LeBron's really good too, but I just think it's the last dance is like one of those perfect examples to like show a comparison of how they are different. Like they yeah. are, they are goats in their own right, but there is a distinct difference between one and the other. The whole game, like just the game is different at that point. Like it's like, it's really hard to compare eras. And it's like, obviously I think LeBron's the greatest player to ever touch a basketball. But like, I think people often get caught up in like, okay, well, so we say this about MJ. So now we have to, or, or I think this about MJ. So now I have to discredit LeBron. Like, no, MJ was that dude. And I think honestly something that could like, like, like MJ was, MJ did it first. Like he was, he was the trailblazer for all that, for Kobe, for LeBron, for all those guys. So I feel like that also can't be taken for granted. Like, obviously I think LeBron, like, like in terms of just like basketball only forget the impact, the cultural impact, all that different stuff. LeBron, I think is the best player to ever touch a basketball, but in terms of like off the court and all that different stuff, like MJ, I think is the GOAT because like he was the first like, or not the first, but I'd say he was like the, the biggest like basketball celebrity ever. Right. Like, like he was a superhero for most people. Like people would see him and they would cry, like like sort of thing. So it's like he was he was he was larger than life at, at, at that point in his career. So it's like that's kind of something that I think like well now LeBron has turned into that too, but like MJ kind of set the example and you always gotta pay respect to like the OGs and everything like that. But it's like something that I think is really cool and I don't think it's talked about enough, like like LeBron never tries to discredit MJ and MJ never tries to discredit LeBron. Like, like those two have the ultimate respect for each other as well as like, like, cause Le- Le- LeBron always has all the respect for the guys that play before you, the guys that paved the way. And that's how you have to do it. So it's like, I would say the biggest difference is like, just kind of how the game, like, cause it's a different game almost with however many years in between, like, like I was, well, I guess LeBron got drafted in 03, but like, especially where we're at now, like in 2020, like the game is so different now than like how it was back then or 2021 now, shit. But like, like the game is so different now. So it's just like, it's just different. And I feel like LeBron's peak has lasted so long. Like it's, that's kind of something that can't possibly be understated. And he's had to change his game so many times, whether he was in Cleveland the first time and then we went to Miami and then we went back to Cleveland. And then now he's in LA and like, they just want to chip. And like, and he's just kind of had to evolve his game and like, just to kind of go along with the, the different changes in the game itself. And then also just with his body. So I think that's something that's incredibly admirable. And another thing that kind of puts him in the GOAT category, but like MJ was kind of the trailblazer, but not even necessarily, but like he was the biggest one at that time. And like when he retired, like he was undisputed GOAT, but like now LeBron has put some doubt into people's minds. When you, when you oh, ask Jack, any bet, I, I was me, just going to say, like, when uh, you ask any basketball player, like, today, if they would have rather played in, like, today's era or, like, MJ's era, is it a resounding everybody would have rather played in this era just because of the ability to freely move and, like, play with the ball? Yeah, I think freedom of movement's a big part of it, like, just because, like, like no hand checking and everything like that, and, like, they, like, catered the game more towards, like, the offensive player. And I feel like that's something that, like, is a lot of people obviously love playing offense. So it's like that's kind of something that you would rather be a part of. Just like the freedom of movement and, like, all that different stuff. Like, people not holding you on your cuts. People not holding you when you're trying to dribble the ball. Like, they, people can't tackle you when you go to the basket. But, like, the way I, like that's not basketball, bro. Like, if I'm going to shoot right. a layup, you try to kill me. Like, that, that's not basketball. Like, right. I don't see it that way. Like. Like, that's not that's not how the game's meant to be played. Like, you're not supposed to just go and clothesline somebody when they're shooting a layup. Like, I hate when people do stuff like that because it's, like, cheats the integrity of the game. Like, because it's, like, like bro, like, like, try to block the shot like or take a charge. Like, but like you don't need to hurt me. Like, like I struggle with that, bro. And there's a lot of, like, a lot of different players now who, like, don't necessarily clothesline you but, like, who pull, like, dirty stunts and all that different stuff. And it's, like. And then you hear people say, like, oh, well, he's a nice guy off the court. Like, really? Like, because when he were on the court, he tries to hurt people. So it's like, you got, like, I don't I, I don't see that as a nice guy. Like, like if you try to hurt people when you're on the court, like, like I, I don't see how you can be a nice Like, I'm sure he's really gracious or whatever off of But, like, when you try to hurt people on the court, that makes me question, like, your morals and everything like that. Because it's like, it's not even like those dirty plays, like, try to help you win. Like, it's just like, like, like maybe sometimes, but I feel like they hurt a lot of people more so than it would help them it's just like it's like i don't know man but like i I don't like i don't like how they get tackled when they go to the hoop or whatever and and like people say like 
oh, LeBron couldn't handle this there. Like, are you serious? Like, like he, he's 6'9", 260 pounds. Uh, he's a freight train. Like, people are like, oh, LeBron, Le- Le- you can put LeBron in any era of basketball and he would be just fine. I promise you. Like, so it's just like, it's just different, dude. And like, like, and like, even more so now, like, as we get older, like, the facilities are different. Like, there's different weight equipment. There's different, all that stuff. So it's just like, it's all different. So it's just kind of like, it's really, really hard to compare. Yeah, going off the comparing eras, I think the interesting thing about LeBron, I've been thinking about this the last couple of days, especially with the trade deadline just wrapping up, is LeBron's the first player where literally for a 10-year period, teams are literally being designed to compete against him in the championship. It's literally basically a LeBron deterrent. You're looking at the Nets. You're looking at the heat in the buyouts, all basically just trying to make sure LeBron doesn't collect these dudes to basically have on his team too. But the other thing too is like you look at the Nets and they have, you know, literally five top three picks on their team right now. Five or six even. Five, yeah, it's five. It's five. Five top oh, three yeah, picks. Yeah, Blake five. Griffin, L.A. Then they have the, – their What was Aldridge? Three. He was, Where was two. Aldridge, Aldridge was, two. was two to Chicago. He was. And then yeah. they traded him for Tyrus Thomas. Yeah. And so you have that was hurt. So you have that. So you have that right there. But you even yeah. look at the Golden State Warriors when they got KD. It was literally because they wanted to beat LeBron. Like that's, that's what it came down to. That's ever happened in basketball to me. KD to the Warriors. Well, that is that will forever yeah. be the craziest thing that I think I've ever seen. And I think I will ever see. Well, you look at what the Raptors did. They traded DeMar DeRozan, who couldn't beat LeBron in the Eastern Conference Finals. They got Kawhi, who was a guy who was on a team that beat LeBron in an NBA mm-hmm. Finals. And then look at what happened. He didn't face LeBron, but, you know, he would have been a guy who could have matched up against him. So you look mm-hmm. at these teams the last 10 years, just, you know, when LeBron kind of reached the championship competition. You know, the Boston Celtics, they were a team, basically. They were put together before the big three, but – they were the one team that really could match up against LeBron, like really give him a tough time in the Eastern Conference Finals. I'd say the, the Spurs everything. were the Spurs were pretty good when they met the Heat. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, that, but they too, but they, they were like designed to be LeBron, no, but, yeah. but they were years beyond like their prime as a big three, like Parker, Tim Duncan, and they had that young Kawhi as well. And Manu had had it been like three years earlier, they definitely beat that LeBron team, I think. But just given where they were in their career arcs, like they didn't have any business being there. And, and Ray Allen's existence also was another reason why they didn't have any business. But that's a whole different, whole different scenario. Yeah, the thing I find interesting about LeBron, and I don't even look at the cultural stuff. I don't look at even some of the on-court stuff. It's the fact that he's literally changed the way basketball is ran by an organization where players can move whenever they want. Basically you look at James Harden, he put on the fat suit and now he's in Brooklyn where he wanted to be to compete for a championship. Like you look at everything he did there. And then you look at the fact that the way LeBron builds relationships. And this is one thing I find very interesting about him is MJ liked to kill guys. He liked to make fun of them, embarrass them, whatever. LeBron does it by being super nice. Like yeah. with everybody, even if he doesn't like you, he says, oh, it's a good dude, whatever. And he basically kills him with kindness, which yeah. I find really interesting. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, there's just there's just a couple of different schools of thought with like how you approach like your teammates when you're when you're such a figure like LeBron or MJ, like because like obviously if LeBron talks, you, you listen or you're stupid, but like you listen and with MJ, but like MJ chose to like kind of like just kind of antagonize them and bully them into like how to contribute like like until like they would work hard enough to like play well like that's just kind of how his personality was and i'm not saying that's like good or bad like it's not how i would do it but like it worked for him so it's like cool but then like then there's like lebron who just like tries to give everybody the ultimate confidence because at the end of the day like the way lebron plays well because like with mj he'd just be like I'm just going to stop passing you the ball. Like, if you're not going to make no shots, like, stuff like that. But, like, with LeBron, like, it's different because his game is so unselfish. And, like, it's not even necessarily, like – like, he's not, like – he's a phenomenal scorer. I mean, he's going to – he probably will, and it's all said and done, will score more points than anybody ever played in the NBA. But, like, he's also such a phenomenal passer. Like, like he wants you to be confident when you're shooting the ball because, like, when he throws it to you, he wants you to make it. Like, 
because it's like obviously he wants to win. So it's like he doesn't want to throw you the ball and for you to miss. And so it's like, and he's gonna throw you the ball. So he wants you to play confidently and do all that different stuff, which like was different than MJ. Because MJ just like if MJ got pissed, he'd just start shooting all the shots. <laughs> so it's like Literally. <laughs> different they just have different games. One question I have for you is now that the season's over, is there something that you've missed doing just in terms of like free time or food choice or like something you've missed where you were trying to stay super disciplined, like, you know, during the season and everything that now you're like, I can't wait to do more of this or play more video games. Like, is there something that, you know, you want to do now that, you know, you kind of have some time off? Yeah. I mean, like I can go see my friends that I don't, that aren't on the team. Like I go see those guys, but like, I don't feel guilty whenever I see somebody from outside of our bubble and like, I mean, I get, a, there's a lot of downtime, which like was good for a little bit, but now I'm kind of getting stir crazy. So I'm about to get back in the swing of things. But like, yeah, no, just the downtime was nice. Like not having to be somewhere for a little bit, like that's nice. But then like, yeah, just being able to see people and not feel guilty about it also is like pretty good. So yeah, I would say those couple of things. How do you keep yourself from getting, if, or if, if that's not even an issue, tell me it's not but like do you, do you ever have to like consciously do things to make sure you don't burn yourself out for basketball or is it just you you stay in this routine you need basketball like you've said before like you need you need a ball in your hands like every two days or so or one day just to make sure like you still get everything going is that the way it is when you're in the off season or do you still need to like do other things and just keep your mind elsewhere so you don't burn yourself out yeah, I mean, like, I wouldn't say I would get burned out with basketball because it's, like, when I'm not doing it, like, I'm sure, like, sometimes, like, when I'm doing it, I'm, like, fuck, like, I'm tired, like, whatever. But, like, when I'm not doing it, it's, like, I just think about basketball. Like, it's, like, I would just want to do it. So, it's, like, and it's, like, if I take, like, a couple of days off, it's, like, okay, like, time to get back in the gym, like, get locked in, whatever. But, like, I feel like after the season, like, you got to take some time to just kind of decompress and just kind of get your mind back right. Cause like, it's, it's a grind of a season, man. There's like 20 league games and the tournament where we're home for however long, like that's, it's, it's hard. So it's like, you just gotta kind of like decompress, reflect on everything, like look at different ways you can get better. And then, and then you just gotta get back to work. So I took last week, I haven't touched the ball in, since the Oregon game. Like, so it's like, okay, like now you just kind of relax think about it, reflect on the season, have different meetings with different people. Like I, my, my, we had, like, I, I have meetings with the coaches tomorrow. Like I'll have a meeting with my dad and all the coaches tomorrow, just kind of reflect on the season and work towards next season. So, you know, it's just kind of like, all right, have those. And then, you know, just kind of get back to it. Like, it's like, just kind of start grinding for next year, shooting. Like, like, but like, I, like, like I said, I just took a week off. So it's like, okay, I can't just go in like head over heels, like full speed bang. Like I said, you got to kind of gradually get yourself back into it. Cause it's like, yeah, like, like, it's not like, you can't just like do like in the off season you can, but like, you can't like maintain like crazy workouts every day. Like the whole, like 365 days, like you can't do it. Your body and your mind wouldn't be able to handle it. Also, I feel like just kind of my social life, and like the like just me with my buddies or like me with like my family and me playing video games is just kind of ways that I used to escape like the game and it's like like I can't just have my mind be 24 7 all day every day basketball so it's like you just kind of gotta be able to separate that like obviously basketball is a really big part of my life but like there's more to me than that so it's just kind of like just working through that and just kind of thinking about different ways to kind of just avoid basketball for a certain period of time is something that hard for me at times but like now like i'm kind of getting a better feel for it because i'm older yeah for sure hopping on 2k and stuff touching a ball virtually yeah we could could try something like that i play fortnite me and joe t got a fortnite win today which is rare we but um yeah no it was fun yeah i mean you know if you want to run 2k i mean i i know i could get a couple dunks on you there virtually i mean not in person, wouldn't be able to slam one on you, but I know I could get one on you on there. Absolutely, my two K, my two K, my player is terrible. <laughs> and you know, if, I, you know, when you're ready to touch the ball again, we could get a little horse action going, and I, I, I think I could, I think I could take a game or two. No, we could try something like that. I'm, I'm down for whatever, bro. Got, got a hell of free time all of a sudden, <laughs> so it's just like. <laughs> Let's, oh, Jack, that would be great. Can you imagine we do on on the podcast? We get a little video, like live stream going. Me, Pat, horse. 
Yeah, that would be electric. That, yeah. <laughs> Just no dunks. No, just no dunks. <laughs> Other than that, I'm game. I'm game. All right. I'm with it. So crazy layups, those count? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, jelly oh. lays and all that. Oh, I got all that going. I'll, all right. I'll, 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 sh- I'll shock you. I, I got some moves. I believe it. I believe my crazy it. handles, though. My handles are kind of weak. My, 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 <laughs> your handles, my, your handles are trash. My, my handles are a little weak. I'm, I'll, I'll tell you right now because I'm not going to talk myself up there. I, I can't go to my left very well. I'll give you that. <laughs> <laughs> but but everything else in between the legs, layups and stuff, I got that. I got that on one. Good thing, good thing that handle's not important in horse. That's what I'm saying. But but hey, there are some people though who will be like double crossover this and that before they shoot. And I'm like, come on. Like that's no, I'm not horse. gonna do that. I'll never okay, do that okay. to you. I got some crazy, I got some crazy stuff in my horse bag with just like layups and then like three I I, I I could, we could, we could pull some. Uh, we'll try some. Oh yeah, yeah. We're gonna get, we're gonna get this going soon. We're gonna ne- next week or two. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna do this. I'm, 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 I'm stoked. You. Um. So my final question for you is, um, you know, now that the season's kind of come to a close, personally, just like you know, you've had basically since last summer to now, just you know, being in this locked in mode of you know, you guys were you know working and everything. All, you know, leading up to the tournament, basically, what's something that you learned about yourself through the whole process? Like just personally, like, you know, personal growth or just, you know, something. How you got big to like, the, the mental side of everything is like, like just being in tune. Cause like, obviously like if you lock down for that long, it takes a toll on you mentally. So it's like just being in tune with like, all that and kind of like getting my mental, like, right. I would say that was a really big part of it. Um, it feels kind of weird, like being like back reimmersed like in society, <laughs> like because it's like we weren't for so long, and so then now it's like, like I can go different places, and it's like I don't feel this, like I still feel guilty like deep down, but it's like it's like okay, like you don't have to feel guilty, like you can go see people, it's okay, like you don't you won't you won't get COVID, or you won't you won't affect so many people if you do get COVID, like it's not the end of the world, like that sort of thing. So it's like like that stuff is. Cool. and then like i would just say like like just like you learned there's just like different elements of the things that you learn like whether that's like that when you go through a season whether that's like physically like what works what doesn't work for me what different things like like you can break down the film like what moves work what moves don't work like what like what what do i do off this action like what what worked for me what didn't like what do i need to work on like when i'm coming off this action like if i'm coming off like a ball screen or pin down or whatever it's like what what can i do to like get better with those and then also like at the same time like uh like the mental side is like just like kind of like just taking care of my brain making sure that's in the right place like just taking care of my body like like doing all the off the court stuff taking care of school everything like that so it's just like different different ways and different levels that you like approach it to try to like get better for next season but i would say now i have a much better grasp after having like gone through it this year than like than last year so you know i feel i feel a lot better moving forward that's so jack do you want to close this thing out of course as always like sam started the pod keep your eyes peeled for that estella's gift card giveaway there's going to be two of them it's going to be well worth it i'm telling you the breakfast burritos they have are absolute gas as always not the same time same place we will see you guys later